Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Afterthoughts for this week. I'm not Kaylee. I'm Aiden. If you don't know who I am, I'm the youth pastor here at SBC, and this is Lee. Yeah. The lead pastor. Yep. And we're here to discuss Lee's sermon, Afterthoughts. Afterthoughts. Yeah. With Aiden and Lee. Yep. It's nice. So maybe you guys, if you've been watching Afterthoughts, maybe you kind of like things look a certain way. So there's think two things that I need to point out. One is that we've moved this microphone to this side. Mm-hmm. And there is a both a symmetrical and a non-symmetrical um, look about it. It's driving Aiden crazy. Yeah. But I think the trade-off is that my face is no longer hidden by the microphone like it was in the last few weeks. So yeah. that's... That's a better thing. Yeah. Although it's not like so much that I need people to see my face. Like that's not really the reason. It was more the you couldn't see my mouth move because the microphone is in the way. And yeah. And it is kind of weird to like Lee's talking, but all I see is microphone. So anyway, we had to switch it to this side. So those of you who really like like the microphone should be over here and over there because that's symmetrical like Aiden. Sorry that this is uncomfortable, but I think the trade off is worth it. Now you can see his face. And the other thing I need to, we're both wearing gray, so, but it is kind of a snowy gray day. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's a part of it. Um, Yeah, that was it. That's all. I just want to mention it for some reason. Now they know. Because I feel like afterthoughts is like we get to talk about silly things for a second. Yeah. And that, I don't know, that warms my heart that I have a place to be a little bit dumb for just a little bit. And it's now recorded for all time. Yeah. It's on the internet. (laughs) Lives forever. <laughs> All right. So getting down to kind of the serious afterthoughts. So, so every time we do a bit of a summary of what I talked about. And this week is really talking about like faith over fear. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and looking at really the story of Peter walking on the water um, and Jesus calling him out of the boat. And how I think, you know, when you think about just the story in itself, how many of us would have got out of the boat mm. like that? We we look at Peter sometimes as the failure who, you know, he jumped, he jumped before he kind of thought, right. Um, but the courage that he obviously had as well um, to do the very things that are, that were nerve wracking, that courage isn't just a blind courage. I mean, he was, a, he was a man of faith. I mean, he said, Lord, if that's really you, like, call me out of the boat. Like, like his faith in Jesus and who Jesus was, was ahead of the rest of the disciples mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. Um, and so his faith in who Jesus was, his faith in that Jesus would would protect him, would be with him, would give him the ability, give him the power to do a miraculous thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it was unwavering in that he's like, call me out. And so then Jesus is like, come like hand holds out his hand. And so he gets out of the boat and starts walking on the water. Like it actually, like his faith led to success immediately. But then I think just again, like a lot of us, and this is what we talked about, like <laughs> we we even have these faith moments and we have these courageous moments and we, we defeat fear only to be sucked right back into it again. Mm. Because it's not like sometimes when, when God does give us the strength to overcome the storm that we're in or to that he walks with us in the storm, the storm still exists. It's still there. And so learning to not just have the initial courage to step out of the boat, but to continue to walk with Jesus, even as the storm progresses, the, the, the existence of the storm isn't proof that God was never there or that he doesn't care, mm-hmm. but to be reminded that he walks with us even in the storm and the storm will remain until it's done its time or it's yeah. done its work. Right? So... So that was, that's kind of where we talk, which about faith really does help us overcome fear, both in the initial, but I think in the ongoing mm. as we go through our storms. So, um, so the first question that I had, um, and maybe, maybe you can answer this because I think as much as we don't always answer the questions, we just ask them and then we pause and then, then the small groups are, per, you know, personally, but maybe you can answer the question. Now I haven't, I haven't given Aiden any, any, I gave him my sermon. I said, you could read this over. And he's like, no, I'm Okay. I'm like, all right. <laughs> so, so now he just, he has to answer these questions and this is right off the top of his head. Um, so just like you guys are going to stop and answer this question. So here's the question I first came up with was, you know, reflecting on the storm. So in our lives, we often encounter unexpected storms that induce fear. 
Um, so just share a personal experience where you faced a challenging situation and how did it manifest fear and how did you initially respond? Is it a good story? Is it a story of like, yeah, no, I was really over, quite overcome by fear and that's where it ended? Or were you able to overcome fear in faith? Um, um, so I would be interested in your, where's a, where's a storm in your life that you've encountered in it and fear was manifested because of that difficulty or that trial? Yeah. Well, it's interesting. It's funny. That story when I was a kid was my favorite Bible story and I don't know why. I don't know if I like resonated with it or if I just thought Peter walking on water was cool <laughs> or what. It is a little superhero-y. Yeah. Or it's like Samson's kind of cool to a kid because right. he's like Superman. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think for me, well, I was talking to Tiana about this uh, earlier today where when I was 19, so 2017 was when I was 19, I think. Um, I began <coughs> to get panic attacks and anxiety and I had no idea what was going on. And it was really interesting mm. because I remember when they first started happening, I just didn't know what was happening and it was weird Yeah, because I'm not a very super emotional person, which is maybe why I had panic attacks and anxiety. I don't know. <laughs> just burying, <It's> too, <laughs> just burying <laughs> the emotions of, down. Years of keep, emotions. Keep stuffing them. It'll be fine. But it was bizarre where I would just break down crying and me and Emily were dating at the time and there would be times where I would go to the camp that I was working at and I would just break down crying where I was the program mm -hmm. director at the time and I had no idea what was happening. I was like, I'm not sad. I'm not like, there's no reason to be crying. I just mm -hmm. can't control it. And then that kind of continued where I realized, oh, this isn't just a problem here. I kept having it and was experiencing panic attacks and anxiety. And sometimes I would go through a few weeks or maybe a month where nothing would happen. And then other times it wouldn't, it was super weird and I still don't fully understand it, but I remember, and I had that happen for probably until COVID, which is funny. COVID is when it kind of went away, which I don't know why. Well, Cause like, you finally got to be alone. I know I finally got to be alone for a little bit, <laughs> but it was, it was really interesting. And in that time experiencing that fear and not mm -hmm. knowing what was happening, especially when like, if you've ever had a panic attack or like, real intense diagnosable anxiety there's a lot of fear and you don't fully understand why you're even feeling it mm -hmm. which for me drives me nuts because right. i just want to fix it and if we can figure out oh this is why then you can logically get out of it and so to be walking with god in that and not knowing why things were happening and still not knowing why they started happening and then went away mm -hmm. and to walk through with them, not knowing, is this going to be the rest of my life? How do I navigate this? And for myself being able to like talk to God and like wrestle with him. And when I would experience that to be able to pray and trust him, not meaning that it was all going to work out. And for the last three, four years now, I haven't had any anxiety or panic attacks. Um, but I didn't know that was going to happen. And I don't know if they'll ever come back, but to know mm -hmm. that in, the kind of storm that I was feeling when that would bubble up that I could trust him and that he was with me and that like Peter, when he fell in, you freak out, but that, you know, that there's a hand out there that you can grab, yeah. which doesn't always mean everything works out and whatever, but it means that there is someone yeah. you can trust in and fall back on. Yeah. I think oftentimes we look at these stories and I've, I've said this word before antiseptically in that we don't, we don't always read, the stories of Jesus and his disciples or the ministry that Jesus had in, in, and that's, I think why I always like the chosen series mm. is it put a lot of like a reality into the stories. Yeah. So when you think about, you know, he's walking on the water, he falls in, Jesus reaches out his hand. It's not like there was like this, you know, the angels are now singing and he rises up out of the water. He's no longer wet. The storm has calmed. You know, there's a bird that flies by like, like, in some ways in my mind when I would read these stories because they're fairly concise, you you read them almost antiseptically, like not remembering that the storm is still raging. He's dripping wet. He's probably cold. He's probably still freaking out. But Jesus is actually touching his hand and he's with him. And I wonder the mix of emotions he would have felt in the moment. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 
so uh, so then it feels unrelatable. These stories sometimes feel unrelatable to us because, you know, Jesus meets us, we reach out, we grab his hand, but we're still feeling all of the fear and the anxiety, but we're also learning to trust and to lean into him and to fix our eyes on him at the same time. And it's confusing and it's messy. Mm -hmm. It's just not as clear cut as like the short story was that we read in the yeah. scripture, right? So, yeah. So the second question um, that I would have for you guys and uh, is this, responding to Jesus's call. So Jesus called the disciples um, was to take courage and not to be afraid. So I think this is a practical question. I always like to ask real practical ones that, that kind of flesh out the, how do we respond actually is, is how do we fix our eyes on Jesus? How do we reach out and actually grab his hand? It's, it's a wonderful metaphor for us to say but in the midst of drowning in a storm, how do we practically do that? You know, what I've done in the past to, to fix my eyes on Jesus is to, you know, fill in the blank. So, you know, for me, one of my strategies would be um, whenever I am feeling really overwhelmed, um, I very intentionally uh, block off some extra time to be quiet, to sit. And I don't do these things well. It's not a natural place for me to go. I actually go to the unnatural place of sitting quiet and opening up the word. And I start reading through the book of Matthew. Like I get to the very mm -hmm. front of the New Testament and I just start reading the book of Matthew. And there's something for me that is like the reassurance of I've found peace there before. And once I get into the Sermon on the Mount, it's interesting, almost every single time I'm calm. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't take me very long. And I just, I'm reading through the book of Matthew. Once you read that genealogy. Right. Like, you're like you just wow. kind of read through it. And, <laughs> and like, it, it, it's kind of on automatic because I've done it so many times. But by the time I hit the Sermon on the Mount, I'm like, I'm in a calm, calm place. And then sometimes from there, then I'll skip and I'll go to a, a different book or someplace that I've already been reading. Not for other people, it's the Psalms. For other people, it's prayer. For other people, it's to go on a hike, right? Like there's, mm -hmm. there's lots of different strategies. What are, what would be one strategy that you've employed um, that kind of recenters you back on Christ uh, when you're feeling like things have gone squirrely. You know, you, in in some ways, using the analogy or the the story of Peter, where you, you you were doing fine, and now you're in the water and the storm is still raging. Like like, what is a strategy that you've employed um, that have that has helped you reach out and grab his hand or fix your eyes on him? Mm -hmm. I think for me, one thing that's been really helpful actually is prayer which if you know mm. me well, I don't really actually like praying because it feels like, what am I doing? Like I'm sitting quietly right. speaking things to something I can't see. And so right. oftentimes just for my brain, I would way rather read a passage because I'm like, right. I can read it. I can look at it. I can understand it. It's how yep. my brain works. Yep. But oftentimes, and the Bible's super helpful. And often if I'm not reading it every day, I'll begin to feel... I don't know, like something's off and mm -hmm. like I'm out of it. But for me, in those moments of fear or anxiety or stress, that prayer is actually huge and being able to mm -hmm. spend a moment in the quiet and even address just what's happening and name it before God. And often for me, for fear, it's usually me holding on to something that I need to let go of. So for me, people's opinions matter a lot. Mm -hmm. And I often have like this fear of man and being yeah, liked yeah. and being able to be honest enough with yourself and with God to acknowledge that and say, God, I got to give that to you. And I actually need to have the healthy fear of you more than these other things and acknowledge who you are. And it could be that about financial issues where it's like you're in a difficult place and you're stressed out. And it doesn't mean that all of a sudden money is going to fall out of the sky. Maybe it does, but that you sit there in the quiet and actually give that to God and like, God, this is my situation. This is where I'm at. I'm stressed out about it, but I'm also not owned by it. And to be able to offer that up to him and just honestly have a conversation with him about it, mm -hmm. where you might not hear anything specifically back, but to have that openness and stillness, which is very difficult in our modern age and even for my brain, yeah, yeah. isn't my natural inclination. But often when I feel that kind of fear or stress or anxiety, I just want to consume some form of entertainment 
to make me forget, but then right. you never deal with what you're dealing with and like have that conversation it, like with it, God. Uh, it numbs you or it distracts you from yeah. from what the what the cause of the pain is. Yeah, I just yeah. want to play a video game or watch yeah. a show or I don't know, yeah. go out and do something yeah, and I can relate ignore to it when actually I need to sit down and deal with it. And that I actually find in doing that and in doing that difficult work of sitting still and bringing it to God that afterward I feel way more, um, I don't know, spiritually lighter than mm -hmm. I did before. It doesn't always solve my problem, but whatever is going on, I feel, I don't know, this closeness to God and this mm -hmm. spiritual lightness that I didn't feel before I went into that. So that's yeah. usually what I do. It's interesting that uh, like TV entertainment, whether it's video games or movies or TV shows or like something that doesn't require me to interact, but just simply receive, mm -hmm. it can be a distraction. Um, the worst place for me to go when I am stressed and I haven't dealt with anything or I'm living in fear or anxiety or some of the very things you talked about is to go golf. Really? But yeah, it's the worst. Because that's the opposite for yeah. me when I golf. I'm like, that's actually one of the best places. Yeah. But I, I, when I need to do that, though, I golf alone. Right. And, but that's I can't, interesting. I can't golf if I'm that kind of really? like, I, I can't, it's all it gets intertwined and I, it's the worst golf game on the planet. I am ruled, I think by my emotions. So. Mm. And if, if you're not playing well, yeah. it's not. And then it just goes <laughs> even worse. So now not only am I stressed and full of fear and anxiety of whatever situations that's real, you can now double it because yeah. of the golf anxiety of like, I, why am I spending so much money yeah. on something? That well, and I'm the trick so for me at. is that you just never get good at golf. So then right. it's, you're only looking to bad shots. So then when right. you have one good one, you're like, this is the best day. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Okay. A total aside there. Okay. Last question. Um, and I, and I, sometimes we've had two questions. Sometimes we've had three and I, yeah, Brie always bugs me of like being the pastor. I've got to have three points in a sermon. Mm. So I, I guess we have to have three questions when I come yeah. up with questions. Um, so Peter like boldly steps into the water um, as an act of faith. And, and we often, I think that one of the churchy phrases out there is to step out in faith. Mm -hmm. um, and I really do think it comes from this story really of like really stepping out into a bold faith step. Um, and it didn't mean that it was necessarily absent of fear because I think there would be some legitimate, what I would consider healthy fear of you're about to do something that's impossible, right? So there, there would be a, there is, there is some sort of like self-preservation fear he would have been battling with. But, you know, when we look at stepping out in faith, uh, there are sometimes where there is, there's risk. Like we, God asks us to risk sometimes, um, sometimes uh, whether it's, you know, to share our faith or to do something bold, um, to to interact in someone's life, uh, to build a relationship with someone that maybe doesn't feel, at least from the start, maybe even feels completely safe um, and yet feel called to do something or to build a relationship. Mm -hmm. So there's, I think, a legitimate, I think what is considered almost like a good human fear of like caution, right? Uh, but then God sometimes asks us to kind of step out to do the impossible or have these bold steps of faith. And so then Peter steps out of the boat in the story um, and does the impossible on this bold step of faith. So curious, why don't you share with your group, um, where was a time where God asked you to take a bold step of faith, where clearly it was it was the nudging of the Holy Spirit. It was God's you know still quiet voice that was saying, hey, I, there's an opportunity here take a step of faith. Mm -hmm. You know, like when I think of mo take moving my family here to Summerland is a, is a moment of like, you know, there was legitimate, like, what if we, what if things don't go well? What if the job doesn't work out? What if mm -hmm. our kids don't like it here? What if we don't like it here? Like we're moving two provinces over, we're leaving all of our family. Like there, there's lots of legitimate reasons of why you could be nervous or have some anxiety, but, but in a boldness of faith and stepping into, we, we believe that God was going to provide for us. We stepped into the opportunity, right? And, and it, and there was nothing to fear. We yeah, stepped into it. Doesn't mean that everything was been easy, but it has been very good. And we see God's hand in all of that. So yeah. How about you? Was there a time where like a kind of a bold step of a bold step of faith where you look back and go, yeah, that actually took a lot of courage. Um, and maybe even a lot of nudging of God to take the step. But now I look back and go, I'm so glad I did. 
Yeah, it's funny. For me, it's the same thing. Um, it was coming here because I didn't want to, like, Summerland's nice. That wasn't part of it. It's like, it's a nice area to live, but to move uh, several provinces away mm. to, because I, there was other options. I could have stayed closer to where I was. Yep. I didn't really want to leave the city and area I was in. I didn't know anything about this church, the church I was at previously. I didn't have a super great experience. And so right. to think about moving all the way over here and to step into um, this role with this community, there's all the like fears you have and being like the Okanagan's nice, but it's so far away. And at the time, me and Emily weren't married. And so she's still in Saskatoon and I'm here. There was a lot of that that was like, I don't, I'm not really interested in that. Which was interesting because I initially only applied because my brother kind of talked about it. And I was like, well, whatever. I'll just <laughs> put my name in there. <laughs> I don't care. But then the more uh, I talked to by you By the way, guys, thanks, Dylan. Thanks, Dylan, yeah, for the little push. You do owe him. Yeah. <laughs> or you can be like, thanks, Dylan. Thanks a lot, push. Dylan. But it, um, yeah. And then the more I talked to you guys and had meetings, I was like, wow. Like, I really feel like God might be calling me out here. Mm. And to be able to step into that was scary and all the things that come with moving and all those different things. Yeah, of course. And then you just don't know. Cause you can only meet a church for a little bit and everybody's and same thing for the church. Like they don't really know the yeah. pastor. Yeah. Everybody's trying to put their best foot forward. So you're like, what is this place really like though? Yeah. And to actually show up and it be really great. And to be able to, yeah, to be like, yeah, I totally see looking back now God moving in that and that he was directing that and I see the reason why I'm here and all those different things is super encouraging but yeah cool. moving two provinces away it's a big step it's a big step I think any job change no matter whether you're in ministry or not that inherent risk of and it can still be really exciting and it can be as safe as you want it to be but there's always that inherent risk of I wonder if this will be what I think it is right yep. so there is a step of faith to that for sure um well, that's it. That's those, those are the three questions that I had. I, I feel like we preached more than we asked questions and we definitely didn't pause. So mm. if this was a bit of a gong show for your small group, I'm sorry. Um, Kaylee was not here to rein either of us in. Um, but hopefully you got to know us a little bit better by us answering yeah. some of the questions. Um, and yeah. So have a great week, everyone. And we'll talk to you again. Goodbye. <laughs>